USS Thresher SSN-593 was the first nuclear-powered submarine to go down at sea, and she sank 60 years ago in April. The catastrophe left the public in shock, and the US Navy struggled to identify the cause of the problem. Rival theories continue to this day to try and solve the puzzle. The USS Thresher was the prototype for a new class of fast attack submarines that were created as the result of 12 years of scientific and engineering research to create a submarine hunter killer to counter the danger presented by Soviet submarines. The Thresher and her sisters were created with the intention of diving further, running more stealthily, and detecting invisible objects. By adding rubber washers between metal parts and bolts, the Thresher was designed to be quieter than earlier submarines. This helps to lessen the submarine's radiant noise, which is caused by metal-on-metal -metal contact. In comparison to those used in World War II and Korea, the Thresher's tear-shaped hull was an evolution that was more hydrodynamic. The submarine was able to navigate the water more effectively than it did above it, thanks to its hull form. The Thresher class was able to dive deeper than its World War II contemporaries because to their tear shape and better hull plates constructed of HY-80 can sustain 80,000 pressure. While most World War II submarines operated at a depth of about 400 feet, improved Korean War submarines were capable of diving as deep as 650 feet. Thresher class submarines, on the other hand, could operate to a depth of roughly 1,300 feet. The Thresher's story began in 1958 at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Kittery, Maine, when her keel was laid. She was finished and launched in 1960. The Thresher was refitted, did a practice dive to a safe 600 feet in July 1961, was commissioned in August 1961, and was given command by Commander D. Nell Azine, a World War II submarine officer. She was rigorously tested after commissioning for over a full year, exceeding the goals set by her designers and engineers. Thresher underwent a variety of tests over the course of her brief existence, including sound testing in the Bahamas to see how well the silencing measures suppressed radiant sound waves from her gear and reactor. She did quite well on the test. After passing the test, she headed back to New London to get ready for a second shakedown cruise to Puerto Rico with the USS Cavalier SS-244 to perform anti-submarine drills. A hint of what was to come was foreshadowed at this place. The Thresher docked in San Juan for the experiment, but that's it lacked the port infrastructure necessary to supply the submarine with outside power. The submarine's auxiliary diesel engine provided daily electricity until it broke down as per routine after the reactor was turned off. Even though it would be challenging to restart the reactor in the absence of the diesel engine, there was still hope. Although the Thresher had a sizable storage battery, it could not sustain the submarine's power for very long. Without the diesel engine, they would need to use the entire amount of electricity in the battery to restart the nuclear reactor, which takes a lot of time and energy. As a result, they had to switch off the interior lighting and ventilation in order to save as much energy as possible before restarting the reactor. The temperature in the reactor room reached an uncomfortable 140 degrees Fahrenheit during the process of starting the reactor. The Kavala came alongside the Thresher and linked her diesel engines to electrical wires to provide power to Thresher as the battery was running low, the mechanics were still working on the diesel engine, and the reactor still had not turned on. Kavala's assistance enabled the Thresher to turn back on her reactor and life support systems. Thresher carried out additional tests during the remainder of 1961 and into 1962, including shock testing by detonating depth charges within and around the submarine, testing her new sonar system, and test firing dummy subrocks. Even though she only sustained modest overall damage, it was enough to cause some of the muting mechanisms to loosen. Returning to the Bahamas, more stealth tests revealed that Thresher was emitting a great deal more noise than the usual metal under pressure groans. Thresher went back to Portsmouth Naval Shipyard for a thorough overhaul in July 1962. On April 9, the submarine eventually made its way back to the open ocean after departing from Portsmouth Naval Shipyard on a two-day journey to conduct a number of dives, including one to her test depth of 1,300 feet. The USS Skylark ASR-20 would once more be escorting the Thresher. With 129 crew members, she departed from Portsmouth, 
the hull's integrity was tested in the initial series of tests, which included many shallow dives. To check for leaks, they only descended to a depth of roughly 600 feet. The skipper used the UQC underwater telephone to report that there were no issues to Skylark. After releasing the rescue vessel, Harvey made plans to meet Skylark the following morning, 200 miles east of Cape Cod, past the limit of the continental shelf. Beyond that point, there was a depth of over 8,000 feet. On the morning of April 10, the two vessels arrived at the predetermined location and started the subsequent series of testing. Harvey informed Skylark, which was 10 miles away from the Thresher's location, at roughly 0730 that they would start their dive. When the Thresher passed depth markers at intervals of 15 minutes as she approached her test depth of 1,300 feet, Harvey alerted Skylark via the UQC. The Thresher had sailed 650 feet, or almost halfway to her test depth, when it was little after 0800. After making a routine check-in to say they had reached a depth of 1,300 feet, it wasn't until just after 0900 that Skylark received a message from Thresher stating that they were experiencing minor difficulty. Have a positive angle. Attempting to blow. We'll keep you informed. After that, there was one final attempt at communication, but it was unintelligible. It was unclear what had transpired on board the Thresher at this time, but it was obvious that a number of things had gone wrong. The Thresher kept descending deeper into the frigid, dark Atlantic. The Skylark kept trying to get in touch with the Thresher despite being helpless on the surface. Instead of speaking, they tried to tap out messages over the UQC, which could be easier to understand. They eventually resorted to dropping signal grenades, the most basic method of communication through hundreds of feet of water, at intervals of 15 minutes. Skylark informed Commander, Submarine Forces, Atlantic and Portsmouth Naval Shipyard of the situation after being unable to reach the Thresher. The letter was delivered to the highest echelons of government, including John F. Kennedy, President of the United States and a former PT boat captain during World War II. The Thresher search and rescue operation got underway. In an effort to find the Thresher, the USS Recovery ASR-43 joined her sister in the search. The recovery discovered an area of water with an oil slick and pieces of heavy yellow plastic and cork at the end of April 10. These would be unmistakable indications of a sunken U-boat following an attack during World War II. The crew's families were informed that the Thresher was overdue and presumed missing that evening, using a term from World War II used to describe submarines that failed to surface when expected and vanished into the ocean. The Navy later discovered the Thresher in six pieces on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. The Thresher never surfaced. 112 crew members and 17 civilian contractors made up the 129 people on board who were all killed. Many ideas have been proposed as to why the sub sank, including the possibility that faulty welds that failed during testing caused the sub's essential electrical systems to be shorted out and its power to be drained. Naval experts think the declassified files demonstrate that multiple variables combined to cause the catastrophic catastrophe, despite the Navy investigation's blame for the sinking being placed on a malfunctioning seawater pipe. The panel of experts claimed that the Navy was hurriedly integrating the Thresher into the fleet in order to confront a new class of Soviet nuclear submarines. Insufficiently trained crews may have been sent to sea as a result of the submarine fleet's expansion, according to some sources. The crews themselves had an overly optimistic view of their equipment and thought it was impossible for nuclear-powered submarines to run out of power. According to the Navy, badly welded piping on board the ship broke, resulting in a seawater leak that ultimately shorted out the ship's electrical system. The crews were unable to quickly access the necessary equipment to stop the flooding, and the ballast tanks malfunctioned. And so, what are your thoughts on the USS Thresher tragedy? Share your thoughts in the comment box below. Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.